Good evening and welcome to Maundy Thursday worship. Holy Thursday is an opportunity to gather with Jesus and the disciples at the Passover table. So much happens at that table. He takes bread and breaks it and offers it to the disciples and to us across the ages as a meal of remembrance. He also institutes a new commandment, the love commandment, the command to love one another. This service, which begins tonight, we don't have a benediction. There's no benediction tomorrow night either. Only after the assurance of the resurrection do we hear the wonderful benediction. We invite you to join us again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. for Good Friday worship and on Saturday at 4.15 for a contemporary Easter service, Sunday morning at 10.45 for our traditional Easter service. Our traditional service will be online only, as will tomorrow night. Our service this evening begins with the rite of confession. Following the confession, uh, we will announce to one another the absolution, and we invite you at that time to announce to those you're worshiping with at home uh, the assurance of Jesus' forgiveness. I ask you as we gather and worship in the presence of God who knows our hearts, do you confess that you are by nature a most unworthy sinner and that you have grievously offended against God in thought, word, and deed, and have merited only God's wrath and condemnation. I do, I do so, so confess. confess. You trust in the mercy of God in Jesus Christ? I, I do, do so trust. trust. Do you promise to forgive others as you believe that God forgives you, and to serve God henceforth in newness of life to the glory of God's holy name? I do, I do so, so promise. promise. Remember, that at one time we were separated from God and we were strangers to God's covenant. But now we are brought near to God through the blood of Christ. So let us offer our prayers of confession. O God of love and mercy, we come before you with a humble and contrite heart, knowing the depth of sacrifice which Christ made for us. We acknowledge that his sacrifice was necessary because of our sin and disobedience. Help us through faith to accept your forgiveness. Though you remind us of our wrongdoings, you do not bring condemnation upon us. We ask that by your grace in Christ Jesus, you make us worthy to come before his table and share in the new covenant which he brings to us and to many. We pray in his name. Amen. I announce to you the complete forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I announce to you the complete forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We encourage you at home to announce God's forgiveness to those that you're worshiping with.
This is the day we recall the life and servant ministry of Jesus, who is the Christ. This is the time, time of remembrance, remembrance of, our, of Lord. our Lord. This is a day we gather at the table to share in his last supper. This, this is, is a, a time, time of, of remembrance of our, of our Lord. Lord. This is a day we find our own place in the gospel story. This is, this is a, a time, time of commitment, commitment to, to our, our Lord. Lord. Come to us, Lord Jesus, in your peace, that, that we, we may, may rejoice, rejoice in your, in your presence. presence. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We turn to Holy Scripture. The first reading is from Exodus 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and on the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast love the holy gospel according to saint john the 13th chapter glory to you o lord now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. 
Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely cleaned. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jewish leaders, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Dear gracious God, thank you for giving us tangible ways to remember you and be with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Each year as I come to Holy Week, and especially the last three days, I find that I have less and less ability or interest in trying to explain and make sense of the week. That's true, not only about this week, but also about life. I don't want explanations, mine or anyone else's. I want to experience this week. I want to experience the truth of this week in my life. 
I have no explanations of what happened on that first Monday, Thursday. And I'm not going to tell you what it means or should mean in your life. I simply want us to reflect on our experience of this holy night. Think about a time when you gathered around the table in remembrance. Where was the table? Who was there? Who wasn't there? What was the conversation about? What was your remembrance as you gathered around that table? It seems to me that we are always gathering around the table in remembrance. It's just something we do. It feels right and natural. It's holy and important. And we look forward to when we can be fully face to face when we gather together. On major holidays, Dave, Chris, and I gather around the table with family and reminisce. We gather around the table at home of a family member by FaceTime right now, and we eat and we talk and remember. We go to church and we gather on Facebook Live around the table in remembrance. We eat and drink in remembrance. It's always about table and remembrance. Normally, every time there's a death or a loss, we gather around the table to eat and drink in remembrance. What do we do at a wedding? We gather around the table to eat and drink in remembrance. First at the church and then again at the reception. We gather around the table in remembrance for anniversaries, birthdays, and graduations. We do it with friends and family. We gather around the table in remembrance to mark our losses, celebrations, and transitions in life. That's exactly what this night is about. Every one of our readings has two common themes, the table and remembrance. In our Exodus reading, we hear instructions about gathering around the table for the Passover meal. It ends with the injunction, this day shall be a day of remembrance for you. In our first Corinthians reading, we hear how on this night he was betrayed. Jesus gathered his disciples around the table, offered his body and blood and said, do this in remembrance of me. In tonight's gospel, Jesus washes feet and commands love in remembrance. You also should do as I have done to you. I want to be clear that remembrance is not simply about recalling the past returning to the past, or recreating the past. Remembrance has the ability to take the past and bring it into the present moment and let it have a continuing effect and impact on our lives. It's the aperture into a new and larger life. We move forward through remembrance of the past. There's something within us that hungers for remembrance and knows that remembrance has the ability to feed and nourish life. That's why we gather around the table to eat and drink in remembrance. We did last Sunday. We will tonight. And we will again next Sunday. Whether within or outside the church, we are always eating and drinking in remembrance. We carry these remembrances within us. One of my remembrances is picking wild strawberries with my grandma Millie as a little girl. Whenever I think of wild strawberries, I think of being with my grandma Millie on the top of the sunny hill behind her and Grandpa Bob's cottage in, fin in Findlay Lake. Her presence is real and tangible. I know she's with me, and I can see her smile and delight in our being together. I relive that time with her, and it changes my present moment. Remembrance has a way of putting us back together again. Remembrance is a condition of the heart. It's a way of being in the world and relating to one another. What are your remembrances? Who are the people? Where are the places? What are the circumstances? What do you experience in those remembrances? How do they affect you and put your life back together again? 
When was the last time you gathered around a table in remembrance? What happened? The reason we remember so much and so often is because as we remember, our faith is strengthened and fortified. We create a reserve. Our remembrances are the experience of faith renewed, emboldened, and made real. That's why on those hard days of loss and sadness, we gather around the table to remember. That remembrance carries us through our sorrows, and it's why on those happy days, we gather around the table to remember. That remembrance fills us with gratitude and opens our eyes to the beauty of the world, the wonder of life, and the mystery of love. So I invite you on this Monday, Thursday night to re-remember, to gather your remembrances and bring them to this place and reflect on them tonight. We'll need those remembrances when we come to Good Friday. When have you gathered around the table in remembrance? And what are your remembrances tonight? Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, gracious Lord, mighty Savior, we give you thanks for this table of remembrance, for this meal of remembrance. We give you thanks for this way of remembrance. As we remember you and your love and your passion and your death on the cross, we remember, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we gather in worship this night, this night when you were betrayed, we pray for all those in our nation who have been betrayed by gun violence, by the coronavirus, and in so many other ways. We pray for the countless families who have been impacted in this past year and in these recent atrocities. Surround each with your presence, fill them with your strength, give them hope and the promise of your love and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for leaders in our nation and around the world as the vaccine is distributed that your command to love might guide their decision-making and that there might be an equitable distribution of the vaccine to all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in special need or circumstance as we gather this evening. We pray for those who have recently been hospitalized or are facing uncertainty. We especially lift up today Bill Bannum, Bob Bannum, the Kennedy family, C.W. Van Bale, Frank Deal, Marv Dicker, Mike Edwards, Eleanor, Dale Gabor, Phyllis Hagen, Drew Hubbard, Jeremiah, Dana Lutz, Ed Masters, Marlene, Marsha, Mitch and Lindsay, Tracy Nadelka, Carolyn Newmore, Gabriella Raymond. Jim Reynolds, Tom Reynolds, Linda Spina, Jeff Todia, Ginny Garkey, Pat and Don Mitchell, Judy Fulton, Jim Jacosh, the John family, Amy Rolfe, Valerie Schultz, Marilyn Spina, the Zebro family, and all those who we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we prepare to gather at this meal of remembrance, we give you thanks for the invitation you, expend, you extend to all to join you and the Savior at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, 
trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you. We invite you to share Holy Communion. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your suffering and death. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the way we live will proclaim the redemption you have brought us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 